Hello, and welcome to the next lecture in the introduction to ultrasound physics. So, here's one of the most important diagrams which you must memorize and understand. It shows what happens to the ultrasound wave at the interface between two tissues, tissue number one and tissue number two. First of all, what is interface? Well, think of it as the border between two adjacent tissues. For example, muscle in the bone, fat in the blood vessel, and so on. The most important wave is labeled by the letter I, which you see here. It is the incident wave, the one that is created by the transducer. Now, what happens to the sound wave at the interface between the tissues is determined by the acoustic properties of those two tissues. We have discussed the acoustic properties. Remember? Density, compressibility, does it ring the bell? But the most important tissue properties are impedance or resistance to the sound propagation and velocity of sound wave in tissue. Remember, the velocity of sound wave in soft tissue is 15, 40 meters per second. You must remember this number. So if the acoustic properties of tissue number one and tissue number two are exactly the same, uh, well, let's say tissue number one is fat and tissue number two is fat as well. The incident wave will become a transmission wave labeled with letter T. In other words, the incident wave will just move on in the same direction and with the same speed in tissue number two as it did in tissue number one. But what will happen if tissue number one is blood and tissue number two is, is a bone? Bone is extremely dense. It is porous. And inside of this pores there is an air. Both air, bo air and a bone have high acoustic impedance to sound propagation. So they both will resist the sound propagation through it. Well, then the incident wave will be reflected from the interface and that wave will be called a reflected wave labeled by letter R. However, you see another wave labeled by letter R. This is ultrasound physics for you. The wave that goes along the transmitted wave but at the different angle is called refraction. Refraction wave is almost the same thing as a transmission with the only difference that it propagates through tissue number two at the different angle. And the condition that must be met in order for the refraction wave to occur is the tissue number two must have a different sound propagation velocity from tissue number one. Please remember that. Again, in order for the refraction wave to occur, tissue number two must have a different sound propagation velocity than tissue number one. The visual example of refraction is a straw in a glass of water. The straw is supposed to look straight, right? But when you put it in the water, it bends. Why? Because light changes its speed in the water. And therefore, you, we get an erroneous location of the straw that is under the water. Another example. Have you ever tried to pick up an object in a pool? You think it is in one place. However, when your hand is trying to grab it, it can't. This is an example of light refraction. Same thing happens to the sound wave. And lastly, you see two angles labeled with the Greek letter theta. One angle is between the incident wave and the interface, which you see on the right. <clears throat> and the other is between the reflected wave and the interface, which you see on the left. The first angle is called the angle of incidence, the one on the right. Pretty straightforward, right? What do you think is the name of the other angle? You're absolutely correct. It is called the angle of reflection. Now, please remember one of the golden rules of ultrasound physics. It goes like that. Angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Or you can say it vice versa. The angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. Please remember that. You will need it. And now let us move to the next lecture. Thank you.